Is investing just a fancy word for gambling? Well, today we're tearing down one of the biggest myths in personal finance. And you, like me, have maybe heard people say that putting your money in a stock market is no different than taking it to the casino. But what if I told you that smart investing could actually be less risky than keeping your cash under a mattress or taking it to a casino? So stick around because by the end of this episode, you're going to discover why investing wisely isn't just for the wealthy or the lucky, but it's actually a powerful tool that anyone can use to build a secure financial future and make more kingdom impact. Hey friend, we are Bob and Linda Waddick, the authors of Simple Money, Rich Life, and you are listening to the Seed Time Money Podcast. And we're in the middle of a 40-week series where we're sharing our 40-week checklist uh, of all the action steps, strategies, and biblical insights that we use to go from paycheck to paycheck living to reaching our biggest financial goal of giving a million dollars and living a life of true financial freedom. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those things that is part of everything we're talking about. And there's a reason this is part of the checklist. And we'll get into some of those details in just a minute. But uh, but like I was just saying, I grew up believing that investing in the stock market was no different than going to buy lottery tickets or go to the casino. Yeah. And just hoping it would hoping you'd strike it rich. Yeah. And and so like I actually believed that um it was actually less risky in many ways to go buy lottery tickets. Oh my gosh. Which is Pretty funny when you think about it, mm-hmm. but but anyway, I remember my first investment that I ever made. It was a uh, utility company. Uh, we lived in St. Louis at the time, called Ameren, and and I remember saving up five hundred dollars to basically buy stock in this company. And I bought that stock because someone said, "Oh yeah, utility stocks are really they're safe and secure," and which is all I could think about because I was terrified <laughs> that I was going to lose all of my money. And at that point, uh, I don't. I'm guessing I was twenty two or maybe in 21, I'm not sure. But I, I, mean, I just remember being so nervous and thinking I've worked so hard for us $500. Like I can't mm. imagine throwing it in this stock and then losing it. Right. Because I knew enough to know that you could lose all your money in a stock. And that that's well, where my focus was. Yeah. I mean, I think if you know nothing, I think that statement probably is a little bit true. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, like it, it is like Buying a lottery ticket. Well, and there's always things outside of your control, Mm -hmm. you know, so it's like I can't control what's going to happen or COVID or whatever. Companies are going out of business because of that. Mm -hmm. So there always is that element of risk regardless of your knowledge, Mm -hmm. but the risk is reduced by your knowledge, Mm -hmm. you know. And so, well, yeah. Whereas the more you know about the lottery, the less <laughs> likely you are to put your trust in it. That's that's a that's the, a good point. I didn't think like about that. Flipped, right? Yeah, the more you understand about the system of the lottery and the odds and how much they're stacked against you. But that was, <laughs> I guess, that's my point. Like, I wasn't focused on that at that mm-hmm. point. All I was focused on was the the fear of what I could lose. Mm. And so all I was seeing was the downside, which is important because there's plenty of people who, who don't see the downside risk of uh, an investment that they make or something right. they put their money into. And uh, and, and th- that's what's ironic, I think, about the lottery or a casino is no one actually seems to know or understand like the true downside uh, in that – you know, there's a reason they say the house always wins at a casino because the house always, always wins. wins. Like now, maybe you will go to the casino and you'll have a good night and you'll actually walk away with a little more money. But what will happen is you'll want to go back mm-hmm. and then you'll go you go back enough times like the house is going to win. Mm-hmm. It's designed and it's no different with the the, the lottery. It's yeah. like the odds of winning are so ridiculously stacked against you. And so everyone's just looking at the upside of, whoa, you know, I heard that guy won $20 million or I heard right. that guy walked out of the casino with $10,000 or whatever the thing might be. But how much has he spent to? Well, yeah, but people are just <laughs> focused that on point. that upside, not looking at the downside. But for some reason, when it comes to investing and, and specifically wise investing, like mm-hmm. that's what we're talking about here, uh, most of us tend to be focused on the downside and not focused enough on the upside. Right. And as a result you know, we miss out on a really huge opportunity here. And so, so that was my, my, that's how I started. And I did not see the upside at all. All I saw was, I really want to, I feel like I should get started investing. I want to do this, but I'm scared and I'm afraid I'm going to lose my money, all my $500 in it. And I, I invested in that, that company and I was watching. I mean, $500 back then might as well have been 10 million. It was a lot. (laughs) If I, I think that was a lot. I think that was a minimum for me to get into like they had a program where you could buy the stock mm. through the company and you didn't have to go through a broker. 
which oh, at yeah. that point it was just much more difficult to buy a stock. Right. So anyway, so I did that and I remember like every day I'd be watching, you know, to see if oh, it was gosh. going up or down, which is a terrible, terrible thing to do. <laughs> it's a terrible uh, strategy. It'll just make you nuts, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I ended up, you know, that stock did well for us. Uh, not, you know, nothing crazy, but I think we made a little bit of money over time and, and it paid dividends. And so we had some dividend earning oh, coming yeah, from that it. That was but, actually really fun. But the most important thing out of that was just doing it for the first time and overcoming that fear and, and, and forcing myself to begin learning, you mm-hmm. know, because it's like I can sit there and you know, whatever, tell one of our kids, yeah, you just got to jump into the pool and like and you can try to explain what it's going to be like. You can't like all the stuff. They can watch videos of it. But right. it's like until at the end of the it. day, until you experience that for yourself, like you're just not fully going to understand. Mm-hmm. And that's what was so good about making that first investment. And so then that, and that one, that's, that was kind of what I learned from that first investment. And the second one, uh, I had met with my millionaire mentor that I, you know, told you all about a whole bunch. Uh, but basically retired school teacher had done really, really well investing. And I, I picked his brains and, uh, or his brain, I guess. His brains? <laughs> he didn't have a lot of brains. So I think, whatever. I don't know where I'm going with this. Anyway, anyway. So I picked his brain and just asked him as many questions as I could. And he shared a whole bunch with me of his strategy and what he did. And so I just kind of started copying off of him. And I went and one of his things, he, he bought a lot of mutual funds. And so I went and bought this mutual fund, invested in this mutual fund. And it, um, and again, I was scared again. And I don't remember how much I put in, maybe $1,000 or something at that point, because it was like a year or two later. And Yeah, it was pretty early on. And I remember like the, the turning point for me from that was when I got my... I remember getting a statement from them. I don't know if it was my first statement or second statement. They sent statements out every three months. And I remember opening that envelope and looking in there and seeing that I had made $97 in the previous three months and I did no work. No work, yeah. And and I realized this is amazing. My money is now making me money, mm. which was such a... I, I just didn't understand this concept. Like this was so new to me that this was even possible. Mm-hmm. And it was just like a paradigm shift moment for me where I, I'm like, this is even a thing like this can happen because at that point I was making probably $16 an hour or something. Mm -hmm. And so this $97 that I just made uh, represented six to seven hours of my life that I didn't have to work. That's huge. You know what I mean? Yeah. that's. And so like once I saw that, I'm like, oh man, how do we do more of this? Right. You know? Because again, at this point, I'm 23, 24 years old. And like, that's amazing that mm-hmm. my investment that I made into this thing has turned into six and seven, or paid me back six or seven hours of my time. And I, and I felt like I'm, I'm at the beginning of this. Like, what's this going to be like in 10, 20 years? You know, and, and you know, and I'll just tell you where it was 10, 20 years later, or 10 or 12 years later, I guess it was, uh, I remember, because again, when I was talking to that millionaire mentor, one of the things that he said that my jaw dropped was that they, he had early early on invested in Starbucks and him and his wife, they heard about this hip up and coming coffee shop. And so they invested in Starbucks. And I think it's like the only stock they invested in because he mostly was in mutual funds. And I don't know when this was. Uh, I'm guessing probably sometimes in in the early to mid nineties when he started investing in them. Well, and if you remember, like, I don't know how old our listeners are right now. But how old are you? <laughs> how old are you? But I remember when I first put it together that Clueless was the first time I saw Starbucks. Like oh, she's really? drinking a Starbucks in the movie Clueless. And when was that? 93? 95? Was it that early? It was in know. the it was in the nineties somewhere. Yeah. And uh just realizing, oh my gosh, like that totally blew up after that. Yeah. And Just that one little placement with the green straw, you know, like the iconic green straw. Yeah. And how I think around the time when you were uh, talking to this millionaire mentor, he was it was kind of the peak of Starbucks where Mm. it was like everybody went to Starbucks all the time. Like that was the coffee shop. You know, Friends was a big thing and everybody was looking for their local coffee shop and Starbucks filled that void. Like they made it happen Like all over the country and, you know, of course, all over the world even too. And so like thinking back to he started doing it like early on and then 
around that time was like the peak where I think it was just mind blowing to us that we watched it go from nothing to it's a staple in every, you know, yeah. every mom's hand has got <laughs> her Starbucks. And also the teenagers have got to have their Starbucks too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and I think that, uh, yeah. So in this conversation with him, you know, I, I remember him telling me, like, distinctly, I remember where we were sitting when he told me, he's like, yeah, we invested in Starbucks a while ago. And I was talking to my wife and we looked at how much it's worth. And she's like, honey, we could pay off the house. And he's oh like, my gosh. Oh. Okay, well, I guess let's sell some and pay off the house. And then they just paid off their house. And and I remember, like, I can I didn't think that's possible. Like, to to make an investment in, in less than a decade, like, watch it pay off your house. Yeah, that is And so, awesome. again, like, those one of those things where, like, my jaw was just on the ground. And I'm like, how? Like, they didn't invest with that intention, did they? No, I don't think so. I just think he thought it this would be a good investment. Happened. But, like, that's the upside potential. Mm-hmm. Again, like there's no promises. And again, I've invested right. in stocks where we've lost all of our money. But <laughs> like that has happened before. Right. And we've had some that have gone down and then we've had some that have gone up. But mm-hmm. like the amount that a an investment or specifically a stock can go up, there's no limit to how high it can go. Mm. But it can only go down to zero. And and so when you understand the difference between the downside risk versus the upside potential, mm-hmm. it just changes things because Again, it was after he told me that about him paying off his house, I think it was like 10 to 12 years later, like we did the same thing. Yeah. Like we were in that position where it's like, wait a minute, you know, we can pay off our house if we sell off some of our Tesla stock that we uh-huh. bought. And I'm like, well, I guess let's do it. Let's do <laughs> you know? it. Yeah. And, and, and so anyway, did. for that to happen and to watch that happen in such a relatively short amount of time, like is just, uh, I don't know. Like it's just exciting to me that that potential is available, and mm-hmm. and I'm not I'm not at all a guy who's going to sit here and say that like picking a winning stock is an easy thing, you know. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, I feel like we've learned some approaches to doing this have that have so benefited our lives, mm-hmm. you know. Oh, and, for sure. And again, like like I said, we've invested some stocks where it went down to zero, and I remember investing in Krispy Kreme during the Atkins diet. I'm like, oh, this is it. <laughs> Krispy Kreme's down right now because everybody's <laughs> on Atkins, and as soon as they're done with that diet fad, they're all going to run back to Krispy Kreme mm-hmm. buy all the donuts. Well, it turns out there was like all kinds of accounting fraud and everything <laughs> else going on, and like you know, so it's like I've made right. some bad investments, but like the amount I lost versus the amount we gained on Tesla, mm-hmm. one of our winners, it's like you know one in five hundred. It's like not no comparison at all, right? And so. Anyway, I, I guess I'm just saying all this because this was just our journey and kind of what we experienced. And when you invite God into the equation, of which I don't feel like I've done this well enough, like we we pray over investments, but I, I remember hearing about a guy who he would go sit in his closet and just pray and ask the Lord what to invest in and like pray for hours and hours and get clarity and just have such an incredible track record. And, I, you know, and I, I don't know that God's always going to give you the perfect thing, but I don't know. I, I think this is definitely an area where why not invite God into it, you mm-hmm. know? And I don't think enough of us consider that and consider the potential unfair advantage that we have when God knows that our heart is in the right place mm-hmm. and we're not just trying to fill up our barns, you know, and try to right. insulate ourselves from needing him, but that we actually want to advance the kingdom and that's the motivation for multiplying mm-hmm. the money that he's entrusted to us, you yeah. know? So... Anyway, so that's a little bit of my story with all this, but I want to talk just kind of briefly breaking this down a little bit why it is less risky than some people think. And Albert Einstein reportedly said that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. And when you understand that, because like rationally, our brains cannot understand compound interest and how powerful it is, but that multiplying effect that takes place is a thing that is so, it's just so crazy. Because, well, let me just read this to you real quick. So I went and found this. There's a study done by um, Vanguard, and they found that you, if you had invested $10,000 in the S&P 500 index in 1926 and then did nothing else, okay, like by 2011, it would have grown to a million dollars. Wow. Okay. Now, if we extrapolate that out another 10 years, by 2020, probably 2020, 2021, that million dollars would be $2 million. So again, a $10,000 investment at that point now, and this is a long time, it's a hundred years basically, but like, that's amazing. Right. 
that you could take a hundred or a ten thousand dollar investment and turn it into two million dollars over the course of a hundred years. Yeah, that is insane. Like, and what that what that is a testament to is investing in the U.S. stock market, of which the S and P five hundred is you know one of the most widely ways or used ways of doing that. And what I would love to hear is what are we contrasting that with? Like, what happens if you put it in a savings account? Oh. A savings account that ten thousand dollars. I don't. uh, I would bet. I I think people are like, well, at least I'll get my ten thousand dollars out, which is true. Yeah, I would bet. Like, and you can do some. You can Google this yourself and find out because I've looked at these numbers side by side, and it is absolutely bonkers. But I would bet that ten thousand dollars might be worth thirty thousand dollars a hundred years later. Wow. I think if you're lucky, to be honest with you, with average savings rates, I don't know what they've been all throughout the last hundred years because they've been up and down and whatever, but. But I'll bet it's not triple. So you can Google it and let me know. That's crazy. Uh, but so the big kind of, I think everybody hears that. And I'm like, okay, great. Well, that makes sense. Like, sure, I would love to do that. Mm-hmm. But I don't want the, I can't handle the volatility. I can't sure. handle it going up and down. I don't want to go and log into my account and see that it went down 30%. Right. And watch my retirement drop by that much. No, that is hard to do. Like, And it is. It absolutely is. And it's not. And that's part of the training of being a good investor is mm. being able to handle that, you know. Ride the waves. But I'm going to read this to you here because this is really, really cool. So there was a study done by the University of Michigan. Uh, that found that the longer you stay invested, and this is actually pretty common knowledge now, so the longer you stay invested, the lower your chances are of losing money, Hmm. okay? So again, from 1926 to 2006, stocks had a 28% chance of losing money, okay? So over that period of, what is it, 80 years, Uh uh, on any given year, you had a 28% chance of losing money that year and a 72% chance of making money Mm, that year. Okay, so the odds are clearly in your favor. Now, here's what's cool. Over any 10-year period, that percentage dropped to just 4%. Wow. So if you invest in, again, like the S&P 500 in this case, uh, over a ten for 10 years, you plan on doing this for 10 years, your odds of losing money are only 4%. So even in a one year period, those odds feel pretty pretty good, pretty decent. Yeah. Even just in a one year period. Yeah. But in but with the ten year period they drop so much. Yeah, and I there's mean, there's yeah. another thing that's cool here too, that this was one of the ones that I don't know, really got me excited. But there's never been a fifteen year period in the history of the US stock market where you would have lost money. Hmm. Okay, so again, the further out timeline you go, the better it's been. Now, I do have to give this caveat here uh, that, that like past performance is not the same as future results. Like, so just because right. this has happened for the last hundred years doesn't mean this is going to happen in the future. Uh, like, it's just important, you know. Mm-hmm. And everything that we're saying here, this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you what to run out and do. <laughs> I'm just telling you our experience and what I've learned and which mm-hmm. has helped me get more comfortable with all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so when I see that and I see, wow, in the last 100 years, there's never been a 15-year period where I would have lost money mm-hmm. or I see my odds of losing money over any 10-year period is only 4%. It's like that just gets me comfortable. Now, yes, I'm still accounting for the fact that maybe that's not the way it's going to be over the next 10 years or the next 20 years. But the end of the day, like I have no better way to predict of what might happen in the future with investments than having some sort of track record what's happened in the past, Mm. you know? Right. And that's why if you have a brand new company that just started yesterday and throwing all of your money into it is really risky because you don't know what's going to happen with that company. Mm -hmm. But, you know, right now, Amazon is a huge stalwart of a company that's probably not just going to go bankrupt overnight. You know what I mean? They have such a long track record of success that it's a much safer thing to invest in. Right. And it's the same thing with the U.S. stock market. It's like, sure, it's at a peak right now, and in a lot of ways, it seems like a bad time to invest because it's been doing so well, mm. you know? And it's like, yes, we are going to have a stock market correction and a recession. Like, that stuff is going to happen, but no one can ever time that, and there's mm. no point even trying. Yeah. And so the best thing to do is just get comfortable with the ups and downs. You know, it's one of the most recent ones being in 2020, in March of 2020. Like, we watched a lot of our investments drop by 35% over a single month. <laughs> okay? That's a lot. And so you have to emotionally be like, okay, to be able to handle that. But yeah. what was so cool is by the end of that year, they had bounced back more than 30% into the wow. point where we made money over that year, even though 
it was a year when it, it looked really bad for everybody a while. Everybody really freaked yeah. out in the market during that time, you know? Interesting. So, again, like if you can just get your eyes off of the short term and on the long term, mm-hmm. um, yeah, we've just found that to be really, really helpful when navigating some of this stuff, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. So, uh, one other piece I'll just add to this puzzle is the diver- diversification piece because. You know, again, buying individual stock is not generally not what I recommend for beginners. Like, I think it makes a whole lot more sense to buy or invest in the S and P five hundred, uh, because when you buy an individual stock, you are putting all your eggs in one basket. And if that stock happens to, you know, not do well, it's like everything's dependent on that. Now, that's what's beautiful about the S and P five hundred is you're investing in a basket of five hundred of basically the largest companies in the U S. Mm. And so you're investing in the companies that. Um, that are driving the U.S. economy in a lot of ways. And so there's diversification there because if three of them, you know, go bankrupt, right. it's like you still have 497 others that are making money for you. Yeah. And the odds of all of them going bankrupt are really, really low, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that's one of the um, the ways that I love uh, when I'm talking to brand new investors and they're asking me, what should I invest in? Which stock? Which crypto? Or whatever. It's like, ah, man, I just love starting with the S&P 500. Like I just... I think that's a great way to start and to stay diversified, to minimize risk while still having mm-hmm. a good amount of potential upside. And of course, you can lose money. Like there's no doubt about it, you know. But uh, again, like the longer time horizon you're looking, it seems like the the risk is mitigated pretty substantially. Well, and it feels like a good way to practice too, because the track record is so good with it that it feels like you almost. I don't want to say have security with it, but just like you have a little bit of inside information. You know what I mean? Yeah. Rather than going with something on your own, like Tesla, like you were like, yes, yeah. let's get Tesla. Like there, you're just kind of like, I'm just guessing and and I'm putting all the things in this, all my hope in this one, <laughs> this one stock to see like well, what we, it'll do. We had multiple stocks. It wasn't like we were just putting one, but yes. No, I'm just... I'm yeah. saying, for example, like if you're just going to start, instead of just picking one thing, it yeah. feels like since you can see that there's a track record here and it's not just one company, it might be easier to ride the waves of the ups and downs. Yeah, absolutely. Don't you think? I think so. Yeah. I So that because you have, there's a little bit of, I, I, I again, security is the wrong word because there's, you know, there's no guarantees of anything, but you can see how it has played out. You can see the ups and downs of what has gone on in the past. Yep. And feel a little bit more confident. I yeah. would think. Well, yeah. And beyond all that, like. Whereas in an individual one, I think you'd be a lot more like uh, wanting to like pull your money out. Like, oh, no, yeah. everything's tanking. Let's pull all our money out. Whereas I feel like you could see how the waves roll. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that is just yes. one of the most basic ways to do it, you know, is in terms of like asset allocation this is what happens if you go to a financial advisor and say i have this money i want to invest it like he's probably going to pitch a plan to you of yeah all right well let's put some in here in Mm -hmm. this index fund and maybe some in bonds and maybe some in real estate and so you're going to have a more diversified portfolio even beyond just the stock market Mm -hmm. in which you know in all of this stuff everything we're talking about we we go into all this in our 10x investing course like if you want to dive deeper into any of this right uh and so we lay out a couple of different strategies that even provide higher levels of or lower levels of volatility. I think we mm-hmm. could say it that way, where they're specifically designed to own different types of assets, different index and different industries, I guess you could say, where that combination reduces the volatility mm-hmm. so that you won't see the swings drop as much right. as if you were just in the stock market. Mm-hmm. So anyway, uh Kind of, again, looking back at kind of why this is important in terms of this checklist and everything like this, getting over that fear and tearing down that lie that investing is like gambling was Mm. absolutely one of the biggest keys to reaching this goal, which might sound like an overstatement, but it really wasn't because had we not done that. Like, I mean, yeah, because I think this is a testament to the power of belief because your beliefs Mm. shape and define your actions, right? Right. And so with the belief that investing is just like gambling, like I would have never taken the time to learn about it. I would have never taken the, definitely wouldn't have ever done it, you know? And so like I had to tear that down to ever be able to actually do it, Mm -hmm. you know? And so the result ultimately had we maintained that belief is that we wouldn't have been able to give 
hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, at, just at this point in our lives. And right. hopefully, you know, we It'll have a lot more. more. Yeah. We have a lot more to do. Like, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm excited about what the future holds and what God can do through our giving. But but just at this point alone, like that would have resulted in hundreds of thousands of dollars that we wouldn't have been able to give. Yeah. Uh, and it all tied back to that belief, mm-hmm. that limiting belief of, yeah, investing is just like gambling and eh, stay away, you know. So, and again, like not, uh, and it, it's really important that I don't want anyone walking away from this just thinking this is a get rich quick thing and you just change your beliefs and everything. Change. Like that's not what I'm saying, but I am saying that this was critically important for us, and right for our stewardship. It would have held us back from what God um, was calling us to do, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm so convinced of that now. Mm-hmm. Like I've just seen it so clearly as the years have played out. And I'm just so thankful. I'm so thankful that he helped tear that down and that I had some people in my life and some books that really impacted me. I took some classes that really helped. And like all of that together just uh, helped me get an understanding and build the right beliefs around all of this stuff mm-hmm. and and being able to lose and being able to handle the losses and handle when it's like when the investments didn't go as well as I wanted, you know. Right. Uh, but anyway, all of it together, though, has been such a net gain that it's it's been mind-blowing in a lot of ways, to be honest. Right. Yeah. So anyway, anything you want to ask, add? No, I think that's it. We're good? I'm a professional at this. <laughs> You're a professional at this? <laughs> so, all right. Well, for your homework, uh, if you have this belief, I would encourage you to dig in and really evaluate it and consider the cost, mm. you know? Actually think through, like, what what is the potential that this could be costing me? Uh and just ask yourself the question, like, what if I actually spend some time learning about how to do this stuff? Mm-hmm. Because it's not, it's just not as hard as they want you to believe. I think that's what the truth is. Yeah. Like I worked in the financial industry for many years and I, for many years, just thought, oh man, I'm not smart enough. And and as I'm there, I'm waiting, about, this is not, they're acting like this is rocket science and this is just not nearly as complicated as, mm. as, they've as, they're, made, making us... as they're making it seem, you yeah. know? and. And again, like there are certain people that can redo their bathroom and there's certain people that can't. And, you know, so I, I understand not everyone is a do it yourself or and you want to work with a financial advisor and all that. Yeah, but, but I think you're really good at simplifying things down to their, ma- their most basic parts. And I mean, that's why yeah. that's why you created a 10x course yeah. is because you wanted anybody to be able to do this. Yeah, exactly. People like me. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, of course, we'd love to serve you with that course if that's something you're interested in. But there are mm-hmm. plenty of books and courses out there that you can check out. So mm-hmm. regardless of how you learn, uh, please do it. <laughs> please do it. Because like this, this, is, um, this is the heartbeat of seed time. And it's not like we're not just in this stuff to just help you just get a budget right just so that you can scrape by for the rest of your life. Like I want you to be able to grow and multiply what you've been entrusted with, Mm -hmm. to be able to advance the kingdom and to change your family tree, to to set your kids up for something that maybe you didn't have when you were growing up Mm -hmm. and and just do this thing the way that uh, the best possible way that we can as Christians and as stewards of what he's entrusted to us. Because I believe that the money in our bank accounts, the, the, the income that comes in, that it is a... It's on loan from or to us from the Lord, mm-hmm. and we have a responsibility to do something with it. And yeah. so, anyway, I'll get off the soapbox on that, but <laughs> hopefully, you found this helpful. Yeah. And if you did, you know, if you enjoyed this, please share it with somebody mm-hmm. who, you know, who you think would enjoy it. We yeah. really or appreciate who might it. Have this question or yeah. this belief, you know? Yeah. 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 So, that's all for today. Have a great one. I'll see you next time. I just learned about you last week. I purchased your book and read it in just a few days and have since ordered five more to give to Mm -hmm. others. This is what Jason and Megan said after reading our book. That's awesome. Way to go, Jason and Megan. We love that. And (laughs) if you've enjoyed our book, you are welcome to do that and order five more for others as well. I would love to see that. (laughs) You can get it on Amazon, but we so believe that the church needs this message that if you can cover shipping, we'd love to cover the cost of the book and send you a free copy. All you need to do is go to seedtime.com slash free to get yours. 